Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks, and today we're going to continue talking about ClickFunnels 2.0. And in particular, what we're going to talk about is setting up any kind of custom code inside of ClickFunnels 2.0, and then also looking at how you would use what in 1.0 we know as your CSS ID selector, and then also the title of your page, how that has been changed in ClickFunnels 2.0, and how you'll set it up and use it a little bit differently. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to go into the main page of our site, our home page here. We're going to go to our site settings because there's really only two places to set up any kind of custom code. The first one is right here on the main page of your blog. You can come in, you can put in some head tracking code right here or some footer tracking code. Both of these, of course, would be JavaScript code. Normally would have a script tag around it and you would put it in here but I will tell you this as of right now this tracking code will go across all the pages inside of your workspace so it's going to be your blog pages and also at this point your funnel pages because I wasn't able to find anywhere in where you set up a funnel that they would have different tracking code at this level um, other than what you're going to have right here so at this point you want to check and put in some head and footer tracking code here and then check the code on those funnel pages to see if it's also on there. And then, of course, you got to determine whether you want it on your funnel pages or not. And if not, you're going to want to remove it from here as well. But now let's go into a page itself. And we're going to go back to our demo test page. And I put a little bit of content in there and I tried to get in the wrong way. You got to click on the name right here. And so the demo pet test page is going to pop up. And so here's the other place you can put it in, which is, of course, on the page itself. So whether this is a regular page, whether it is a funnel page, a course page, doesn't matter. All the pages work exactly the same inside of the 2.0 editor. And so the first place you can put in some code is you can come up here to the top and you can click on that and it basically gives you the entirety of the page wide code. So if you had a bunch of CSS in here, it would all be populated at the bottom. Uh, same thing with your header tracking code and your footer code. I shouldn't call it tracking code. It's your, it's really the HTML or JavaScript that you're going to put in the head section of your HTML and again down here it is the HTML or JavaScript code that you're going to add into the body section of the HTML or of your yeah into your HTML now again here it says footer code technically there is no footer you got a uh, the head section and you got a body section but it's okay just know that if it needs to go into the head section to put it in here but 99% of the time when you are writing any kind of JavaScript code or even HTML it will go in here now there is one other place where you could put this kind of code and that is in a custom JavaScript HTML box and you can put that right there so if you want that code, the HTML or the JavaScript to be specific to just a little chunk on the page, like you want to drop in an iframe or something like that, you want to put in your iframe for Calendly so somebody can book a call with you, you would drop it right there into the custom JavaScript HTML box and you can click this here, opens it up full page and we can close it as well. And then let's go back to where we were right here with our code. And so again, here you can open it up full page and drop it back down. But you're also going to notice here there's nothing on the right-hand side because we are in, uh, essentially think of it as the universal code for the page. Whereas if we go into each individual element, we're going to get a little sidebar here. So let's take a look at that. Let's open it up. Now I can open up that code now for this element by clicking here or by going to the inside of it and clicking up here. Now I say it's the uh, HTML, or I'm sorry, I'm saying in this case here is the CSS for this element. It gives you your information over here, but you will still see all the CSS for the entirety of the page right down here at the bottom. Same thing if you were in the footer code, you would see all of the entirety of the uh, HTML or JavaScript you put in here for the entire page. Now, here's the interesting part, and let's uh, go back to 
ClickFunnels 1.0 because most of you are going to have been users of that in the past. And so I want to show you what I'm talking about in there and then translate it into 2.0. So we're going to come in here and I'm looking at this paragraph element right there. And so let me just show you how I got there in case you don't know. I went to the gear setting, went here bottom right, hashtag, open that up, and we have a title right here. And then we also have our CSS ID selector. And if we ever wanted to do any kind of CSS in here, one of the things you could do is you can grab a hold of this CSS ID selector right there. We'll close that for right now. We'll come into our CSS. Let's just drop this in and we'll just uh, do something really quick here. And we'll just say uh, background dash color of yellow. And so now you see in the background there, I just turned that paragraph a bright yellow color because I grabbed what is known as the CSS ID selector for that element. And then I gave it the background color property of yellow. Now, another way you can do this is you can come in here and we're going to open this up again. And let me move this over a little bit. This here is known as a data title. It's the title for the element in as far as what we're going to see up here in the top over here on the elements right here when we change it. It's the title up there, but it is also what is, it's a type of an attribute known as a data title or a data attribute. So let's just say here, we're going to change this here to demo paragraph. And I made a small D and no space on purpose because normally if you're giving something a name for an attribute or something like that, you would normally camel case it like that. And now we're we're going to click on update and now what we want to do is go back in there because I should have copied that before I went out and let me copy that and we will close this and now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing here and what we're going to do is we're going to paste this in here and then we got to do a little bit around it we need uh, some square brackets around it and then we're going to say data title we're going to say equals, and then we're going to put singular quote around here. You could put double quotes, but it always just strips them out and puts in a singular anyway. And then we're going to do our curly brackets, and then we're going to say just color of red. And now you see the color turned red, because what we did is we took what was a data attribute now, let me show that to you right now, a data title, a data attribute um, of demo paragraph. And we use that as our CSS ID selector, just like we did on the other one right here. But you can also see we come over here and we go manage our elements that we should have right here. It says demo paragraph It's all been capitalized, but now we change the name there to demo paragraph. But what we want to do now is let's save that and let's preview this and I will show you where this is coming from in the code. So let's turn on our dev tools and uh, normally how most people come in here, you come in here and you click on it and you say inspect and it'll bring us into our element right here. So we got our L headline wrapper is what we're looking at at this point here because we want the outermost portion of that element. And right here we have our data title equals demo paragraph and that was set in there right there that was set in there when we changed the name of this element we changed the title of this element to demo paragraph so that is picking up this information right here the css id selector is being picked up right up here so here is the id for this element so that is an attribute known as an id um, and then it is the ID for this element. And then here is the data title for this element. And that's how 1.0 works. And so now in 2.0, it doesn't really work that way because with 2.0, they don't natively out of the box give you an ID for each one of the elements. See, in ClickFunnels, every element you can come into, I can click here, click there, click on hashtag, and here is my CSS ID selector. Every single element is given an ID. Inside of 2.0, not, ev not every element, in fact, 
I'd say at least 99% of all the elements are not natively given an ID. And if they are, there's some very special reason why it is. And the reason for that is this is built on React JavaScript. And React JavaScript takes all the elements as they are being built on the page. It strips the CSS out of it, all the CSS you would normally put in in 1.0 or 2.0. The, you know, the colorings, the background, borders, all that kind of stuff, it strips it all out and it puts it into a, a, another CSS file in the code. It doesn't leave it as inline CSS. It puts it into an internal CSS file. And so because of that, you don't have the CSS in each individual element and also they do not use IDs. Everything gets a, uh, a unique identifier, which is a class. So let me show you what that looks like. So let me turn this on real quick. And we'll let this load up. And so now again, let's just take any element, right click and inspect on it. And we're going to come here. So here is the outer wrapper of our paragraph. So in 1.0 at this level here, we would have had two things, the two things I showed you over here, which were the ID right there and the data title right there. Well, in 2.0, there is no data title and there is no ID. You see this one here it starts with ID dash, but technically that is a class. So that is a different type of data. At, I mean, that is a different type of attribute known as a class. Your main three attributes are basically your IDs, your classes, and then your styles. There are no styles in there either. So there's no IDs, there's no inline styles, and there are classes where each one, each element gets its own unique class ID. And so here we got a different ID. So a lot of the same numbers, but this one ends in 12, this one ends in 13 right here. So a lot of the things are not in here that you would have seen in 1.0, but that doesn't mean we can't put them in and it doesn't mean that we wouldn't want them in there if we were trying to do some sort of custom coding. So what we would do inside of 1.0 now is again, we're targeting this paragraph right there. We can come down here. Now what we could do is we could figure out what is the what is the um, class for that element, which means we'd have to come over here to this element right here. We would have to copy this class. Let me see if I can copy it. It'll come right there. Okay, let's copy that class. Let's come over here and we could say, all right, period, and then paste this in. And then we'll see if this works or not. Should work. Background color of yellow semicolon and it didn't work because I'm not in the right place. Let's try, let's X that out of there. Let's try it here in the CSS where it belongs. There we go. Now you can see it's got the background of yellow, but we had to go into the code itself and find that CSS class and then pull it into here. Well, what they do instead is you can come over here and you can generate an ID. Now what you're going to find is that this ID looks exactly the same as this. The only difference is it is an actual ID and we know that because it will have a hashtag at the beginning of it. So as I pull this out and paste that in and we go like that, boom, now all of a sudden you got the hashtag right there at the beginning. It replaced the period with a hashtag. Now you can only do that though after you click that little button. And let me uh, go into this one and show that to you again. You have to click the little generate ID button in order for that to generate this in here. Because now what we're gonna do is we're going to save this page and we're going to come back out to this element and we are going to reload it because what we're going to find now is as this element reloads on the page, now here we go. Now all of a sudden we have an ID where before all we had was that class. So now it has put an ID in there for us as well. 
And so here's the rest of the element as it was opened before. So now we come back in here and here is, let's go back to the element we're working on and we can open this up. So let me see, oh, the other thing here is we have our title. Now this title here is used in the layout, not in the CSS. So let us open up our layout here and we're going to come down and we're going to come into this second column. So we're in our second column right there. And we're going to come down to our paragraph. And you see there it said, oops, I closed it. It says paragraph. Okay. Now let's go back into our paragraph itself. Let me see. What do I got to do to get back in here? Um, let's go back into the code there. Let's say we're going to change this now to demo paragraph and click on update. So now it's updated. Now let's go back to our layout. Now the name here is called demo paragraph. But if we save this and come back out and reload the page, and we'll come back to the paragraph that we are currently looking at, which is right here, you're going to see nothing has changed. There has not been a new attribute put in there. There's not been a new data title put in there. Nothing. So how do we get to put in a data title if that's what we were wanting to use in order to target this element? And we will do this by that's not what I wanted. I want to come into here. So I'm actually, I mean, in, in the editor for the paragraph, we're going to go to advanced. We're going to come down here, add custom attribute, and then we can give this custom attribute a name. Now I tried putting in something like class equals or ID equals or uh, what was the other style equals. It doesn't like any of those. So I'll just show you that. So let's just try style. Oop, name is reserved. Let me see class reserved ID reserved. Okay, let's try data title like we had on the other ones not reserved. Okay, so we're going to say data title and we're going to go with our data title from before paragraph as uh, written out as in camel case. So small d capital P, we are going to save this now. And you see it populates it right here. I can go in and edit it if I want. I can delete it if I want. But now let's save that element. Let's go into here. We will reload the page. And let's take a look at what we got now. And so here we have, boom, right there. Our data title is now in there and it is called demo paragraph. Now I called this one in particular data title just so it was like ClickFunnels 1.0, but you can call this anything you want. You can, I mean, now, now let's look at the code here because you don't want to get too silly on this. If you notice here, so here we got data title. And let me see data style guide content right there. Here we got data page element. And so like I said, these generically are known as data titles because you got the word data and then you have something after it. And there are special JavaScript functions where you can target attributes that all begin with the word data, but it, they don't have to start with data. They could be realistically anything you want. I mean, I could call one here data, data Dan. Why not? We could call one Dan or we could just call it Dan. Well, you could call it anything you want. I usually stick with the data. So let's say, um, you know, data target, let's say we might use that for something or um, what am I thinking data clicked. So you're going to keep track of whether something was clicked or not. You're going to say data clicked and then um, it's going to oops, what do I do here? I guess I can't hit tab. I was trying to tab down here. So data clicked and you're going to give it to the um, attribute of true. So you're going to say, okay, we're going to take all these elements and we're going to give them all the 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 data attribute of data clicked of true. And then in the code, you're going to say, okay, in these circumstances, we want to change that value to false. We want to change the value from true to false. You could do something like that, but we will cancel that out. And then I have to take a look, but I think that is it for the nuances, especially between ClickFunnels 1.0 and 2.0 on what you can do regarding code. And of course you can get into the code editor at any level here. We can do the exact same thing for a row. You can do the exact same stuff. Oops. 
uh, for a column. I guess you got to open up the column and then go to the code from there, the section, any one of the elements. You can come in here, you can generate an ID, you can change the title that will show out in the layout, layout, and then of course with each one of these as well. If you go into a row, let's say, you can go in here and you can change the attribute at that level as well. So a lot of granularity as far as how you can affect things. You can add IDs to basically every element on the page, and then you can also add any kind of a custom attribute to any item on the page as well. So that's it for code. If you got any questions, just let me know.